Okay, so a few takeaways right here. Okay, number one, it turns out that telling your voters to vote is actually a better strategy than telling your voters not to vote. Republicans in those Georgia Senate races at the beginning of this year, they basically told their voters your vote doesn't matter and then people didn't show up and then Republicans lost in what is a red state. Okay, Virginia is a very blue state and Republicans said you should show up and you should vote and your vote counts. And whether or not you are concerned about voter fraud, the best way to win is to go and vote. And focusing in on, are they going to steal it? Is it going to be stolen? Is your vote going to count? Is a bad way of running an election cycle. It is a bad idea moving forward. Okay, point number two, run against the Democrats. As always, run against the Democrats. Make the Democrats your opponent. I said this throughout 2020. If people had thought that Joe Biden was the issue, Joe Biden would have lost. They didn't. They thought Trump was the issue, and so Trump lost. In Virginia, people thought Terry McAuliffe and the Democrats were the issue, so Youngkin won. It's that simple. If the election is about your opponent, your opponent loses. Terry McAuliffe tried to do that to Youngkin, and he completely failed because Youngkin is inoffensive. Youngkin does not make people feel uncomfortable. Youngkin makes it very, Youngkin did what good candidates do. He made it very difficult to vote for his opponents, and he made it very easy to vote for him. That is what good candidates do. Bad candidates make it easy to vote for your opponent and difficult to vote for you. That's what a bad candidate does. That's what Terry McAuliffe did. He went out there like a fool, and he said parents should not be in control of their children's education, and then he kept doubling down on that while campaigning with Randy Weingarten. He kept telling parents that they are racist if they mention the phrase critical race theory. He kept saying over and over and over again that parents should not determine whether or not they are indoctrinated, their kids are indoctrinated with LGBTQ propaganda in schools that's up to the school boards. Right? That is it. I mean, he made it very difficult for people to vote for him and he made it very easy for people to vote for Youngkin because he guessed, he, he just kept shouting that Youngkin was a racist Trumpkin. He kept saying it over and over and that just didn't wash because Youngkin isn't. And so Youngkin won. And these, are, these are major lessons that Republicans need to take for the future if they hope to continue winning. Also, further lessons. Republicans should not shy away from the culture wars. So I know that there's the smart set in Republican politics who are constantly saying that the culture wars are a dummies. It's a dummies game. Why are you arguing on culture? The answer is culture motivates people. Culture gets people up in the morning. You know, how your kids are educated in schools matters a lot more to people than their marginal tax rate. I care a hell of a lot about my marginal tax rate. It makes a big difference in my life. But I can tell you, how my kids are educated in school matters one million times more than that. When Republicans abandon the social issues, when they pretend the social issues don't matter or they are a distraction from the main issues, this is sort of how Romney ran his campaign in 2012. They lose. Romney did not run against Barack Obama's radicalism in 2012. He ran against his economic plan. That is not how you win. The way that you win is by pointing out the social radicalism of your political opponents and presenting a good economic plan, which is what young kids did. Also, this race made clear that Republicans can indeed keep together the Trump coalition and they don't have to have all of the bad tweets to go along with it. Kristen Soltis Anderson, who's a pollster for the Washington, she, she has a piece for the Washington Examiner. She points out Youngkin got all the upside of Trump, but none of the downside. She says there's little doubt Trump will try to take credit for Youngkin's victory. To be clear, Trump quite literally phoned it in at the last minute for Youngkin after enough polls showed victory was in sight. Youngkin and Trump did not donate to each other. Youngkin said the bare minimum about Trump necessary to survive the primary process. What Trump did do over the last five years was engage many formerly disconnected voters and turn them into more habitual voters for the GOP. So that was good, what Trump did. He, he continues to have an impact on politics by turning out the vote in rural areas, just by having activated people who are now used to voting. That's a big thing. Youngkin's savvy move was not to embrace Trump, but also not to insult Trump or disavow him. He was not about being pro or anti-Trump. He was about not being Trump. He was about being Youngkin. Okay, and biggest lesson of all right now, Republicans have a target-rich environment. The Democrats are an absolute mess. They're a mess. Okay, the, Joe Biden is a disaster area. And again, it wasn't just in Virginia. It's all over the country. It's all over the country. I'm going to give you some results from other areas of the country that really cut against the Democratic Party. 2022 is looking like an absolute wipeout for the Democrats. I would not be surprised if Republicans pick up 40 to 50 seats in the House. I certainly would not be surprised in this environment if Democrats lose the Senate outright. We're in a battle for the culture and for our values. Like and subscribe to help keep our videos on the front line of the fight and top of your feed.